Competition, it is what fuels many of us. And winning is the goal. To play well enough that the scoreboard tells us on that day we are worthy. But what if? What if sports can help teach kids how to win despite results? What if it could provide a platform for another cause inside the team? This ministry is about transforming lives and you know, presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ to people, to kids and coaches, and see what, what happens in their life. And in many, many cases, it transforms their life, it changes their life, it makes them who they are. Enter the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, an organization that is there to try and make a difference in a participant's spiritual life. To try and teach that sense of teamwork, to enter the core of one's soul and basic nature. The one that inevitably says, me first, you know the one, the part of us we hate to admit, it leads us to selfishness. But if you make it intentional and say, you know what, I'm not gonna be on the throne, of my, I'm not gonna be who I worship, I'm not gonna be who I serve, it's not gonna be my sport, it's not gonna be my life, it's gonna be God. The national head of FCA knows a little about competition and winning and losing and everything in between. Les Stecco was a head coach for the Minnesota Vikings, a disastrous one year. He went on to serve as offensive coordinator for many more years in the NFL, then came back to another calling, the head of FCA. My NFL peers asked me, why don't you get back into the game, the real game, the football game, the NFL game, and I tell them it's so temporary. I'm in a great game now and it's all about life and death. It is the coaches they want to reach first because that's where it starts. There was a guy that came along that kind of opened a little bit of a window that you can love people and still be good, and that was Tony Dungy. Now, he's almost like a prophet without, you wouldn't say he was, but in essence, what do people do? They see how he coaches and they go. One of the lessons that athletics teaches you that, that uh, you have to set goals and set them high, and you're not always gonna reach your goals. But uh, the important thing that I, I really think that whole experience taught me is there, there's a difference between goals and, and your purpose. That helps get it to the grassroots. The young athletes looking for role models and looking for direction. Billy Graham said, a coach will influence more people in a year than most people do in a lifetime. Who's coaching the coaches? Case in point. Chisago Lakes High School in northern Minnesota, where Corey McKinnon oversees the tennis programs and the boys' hockey team. Singles players, you guys, Dustin changes. Just move your feet, get your serves in, keep that ball in play, aim for the blue, keep it out of the alleys. Okay, doubles players, let's attack. Know what your opponent is, know who they are, and then expose their weaknesses. What was my goal for you guys so that 20, 20 years from now, what was it? Play your heart out, play your heart out. That's all it is, play your heart out, okay? Through that process of about a year and a half of him starting to explore the question, and this is the big question, are you a coach who's a Christian or are you a Christian coach? And it really kind of made him think a little bit about it, what he was, and he started this journey of what does it really look like to apply faith to coaching in a public school setting? We sent Susan Commerce to the high school to talk to the coach about just that. He made the decision to incorporate his style into his programs. You know, it's all those things as a first year coach that when you don't know, you, you don't know, you're kind of flying blind and I, I totally understood that. I'm like, yeah. I've, I've done like things that are FCA specific with leading athletes Bible studies, coaches Bible studies and uh, have an opportunity to work with athletes that have been on my teams, um, specifically boys from my perspective. And my wife has done some work with some girls uh, where we have a chance to, to allow them to grow spiritually where we're, we're going through the Bible, we're kind of going through different things that connect to their sport and then their sport back to their, back to their faith and that whole intertwining process. The kids have to buy in. The kids have to see a need in themselves. And the kids have to want to be a part of it. He's a great guy. I don't. I, I wouldn't want anybody else to be my coach. And I don't know. He's just. He's. He's brought me along so much as a as a person and as a and as my faith. This is a public school, so faith is not part of the curriculum. That means you must integrate with a respect for all. It can be delicate, and it is very important. It's an inside-out process, and that's that's something that we talk about. Are you an inside-out coach? And it really starts more about what's going on inside of you 
and, and is what's coming out reflective of, of, you know, that it is in reality, reflective of what's going on in your own heart. That's what it's all about for Corey, to make a difference by being himself. Good luck, ladies. Enjoy the day. We learn more by giving away than we do by receiving. Anytime I teach something, anytime I give something away or I, I, I expect something of kids, for some reason it, it transforms me and hopefully impacting that kid. You see, a coach is always under the microscope of his or her athletes. They're watching and wondering and looking for authentic leadership. Pretty uplifting. He's usually pretty positive. He's never really negative. So it's pretty uplifting having him out there on the course with us. Because at an impressionable age, you might get just one shot to make the right impression. They will learn a skill set pertinent to the sport, yes, but it is the life skill that is the ultimate goal. For more information on Life to the Max, go to our website at lifetothemax.tv.